Hi friends! Today we are going to be celebrating Chinese New Year and this year 2018 is the year of the dog and so we've got two different um, Chinese fans to help us celebrate. This one has got the uh, dog paw and then the Chinese character for the year of the dog and then we've also got a second one so it's kind of a two project um, video today. And the second one is this red one with pretty gold cherry blossoms on it. And so, and our inspirational thought for today is it doesn't matter how slow you go as long as you don't stop. And that is attributed to Confucius. So I hope you guys have fun making these um, fans and maybe for the first time celebrating Chinese New Year or just incorporating it into your celebration this year. The first step in the fan project will be to take the template. I have a template on my uh, blog. You feel free to use it, you're more than welcome to. Um, you don't have to, basically it's just a portion of a circle or a ring. And so it's not, um, well, the outer ring is pretty much kind of a half but then the sides kind of angle down. And so that's why I created the template so you could use it, but you can totally freehand it. You can use a couple of round dishes that you have or something and do anything with it. Then the next step is to go ahead and get the paint out. I'm going to be using red paint on this first one, and this will eventually be our red flag, uh, not flag, our red, fan with our cherry blossom trees. Now when I put the red paint on, I'm not worrying at all about staying in the lines because this is going to be cut out. I want to make sure that it's covered. Now that other color red that I put on, it was too much of a berry for me once I got it onto the plate. And so I changed my mind and went with the other uh, red. They're both um, acrylic paint. Uh, and so just pick your favorite red. Usually the Chinese red tends to be a more traditional, vibrant, um, br brilliant, bright red. And so then I'm just going to fill in this fan and then we're going to set it aside and let it dry. Now the next step is to let that red fan dry and then we'll take our template and trace that and we'll begin our gold fan. Now this one, um, I'm kind of going to experiment with the paint a little bit. The paint, the gold paint that I have is a bit translucent or see-through and so I want to make sure that 
the gold that ends up being on, being on the fan is a real crisp, brilliant gold, like that real deep gold. And so I'm going to um, put yellow down underneath and then I'll go through and put the gold on top. So as I told you before, I've got my yellow down and it, the color is saffron yellow. And then I'm just gonna go over the top. And I'm not um, particular right now about it being, the yellow paint being wet or kind of damp. I actually would prefer that to let the gold kind of mix in a little bit better. And so I'm just going through and putting that top coat of gold. And I hope you can see how nicely that gold looks now instead of just a yellow or a transparent gold. I really like that. Now we are switching to the red fan and I'm doing the same process as the gold fan where I'm putting down the yellow paint first and then I'm gonna put the gold paint over top. Now I'm just kind of drawing a line or painting a line from about two inch, about an inch and a half up from the bottom right corner um, kind of like a little swoop up, almost like a half moon shape. And so that's going to be one of our branches. And just going in here with the yellow paint, that saffron. And then kind of making it so it's not quite see-through. This paint tends to be a little bit translucent. So it's a good one to use the double layer of the yellow and the gold together. And now I'm just going to kind of randomly add little branches. This is not an exact science by any means, but I just kind of alternate sides. And so I don't really want two branches at the very same point on the tree on both sides. Um, but I want to just add some detail. And then at the top of each of these branches is going to be a cherry blossom. And the cherry blossom is really straightforward it looks a lot more complicated than it is but i'll get to that part and explain to you how i lay down those little blossoms Now these little nubbins that I'm making are kind of like those little teeny tiny blossoms that are starting to, to bud. And with that, I'm just gonna put a little circle, a little oval, just on those little buds, um, just to kind of indicate that they're not full blossoms yet, but they're little small ones. Now the actual cherry blossoms is just gonna be five little petals. And so I just go around and 
add the five petals right on that one. And now I want to lay in my second branch so I can know exactly where I want to put my petals on the left side of my first branch. So I'm just kind of coming in with that kind of same curved angle and then alternating sides of the branch and going from there to decide where exactly to put the branches. Again, this is not an exact science or anything like that. It's just wherever you want them, wherever you think that they would look nice and look pretty. I just make sure to alternate sides of the branch with the smaller branches. And again, with laying down these little uh, flowers, it's just two, one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll come up here and do another one. One, and two, and three, and four and five. One and two and three and four and five. And just touch up that one a little bit. And one and two and three and four and five. I usually like to start with the brush, the tip of the brush, um, towards the tip of the flower and having it go towards the branch. And so feel free to turn your paper as you go. And then just make sure, I like the odd um, numbering of the branches, excuse me, of the flower petals. I think the odd number just looks better. And so I just end up, <coughs> excuse me, I end up doing five little petals on each of those flowers. And then as I get done with the flowers, I just go back to those little sprouts, those little offshoots, and I just put a little, little oval circle nubbin on top just to indicate that they haven't blossomed yet, but they soon will be. And then in the bigger branches, I just put five of my little petals. And then once I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and go on top of it with the gold paint and so it's just the same exact process again
Okay, so we're done with this fan. Now we're gonna put this off to the side and grab out the yellow one, or excuse me, the gold. And so now the gold has taken some time to dry and I am just going to take the lid of a spray paint bottle, actually, and I'm going to trace around it to make my circle for the middle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with red paint because I want to do a gold paw print for the paw. And so I want to make that base red and then put the gold on top. And so I'm just gonna come in and fill in with red paint right here. And just make sure this one I want to be quite precise and quite clean and neat um, with a lot of um, Chinese and Asian art it tends to be uh, very precise and very clean with the lines and so this circle in the middle is probably going to be my most precise section of this um, project um, the other side of course of that the only thing that's going to be more precise than this is going to be the actual character and so that will be um, hopefully a lot <laughs> more precise and I'm still gonna freehand it, but that one I'm gonna take my time a lot more with trying to get that just right. Okay, we've got that all filled in and now I wanna make some borders around the bottom part of the fan and the top, um, basically the two arcs and so I'm just going to come around by the line I'm gonna overlap the line a little bit because I want to make sure that the paint is completely on the edges and so I'm just gonna kind of overlap that pencil line and just make the border lines just so they're nice and they're about the thickness of this brush this detailed it's called a detail filbert brush and so it's just kind of a small um, half rounded tip brush but it's still flat that's um, how it's a filbert but I'm just gonna come through and finish the border on this and then we'll let that dry and while that's drying we'll go ahead and start to assemble cut out and assemble our red fan Okay, really quickly, I'm just going to show you how I uh, measure out and cut the chopsticks for my fan armature or my fan bases. And so I take just regular chopsticks, the wooden takeout kind, um, or that you get at Chinese restaurants or um, a lot of times grocery stores have them and they sell them in packs but I'm just going to take them and kind of measure them out along each other and then make a little line and note how long, how long I want to cut them. Now cutting them isn't really going to be cutting them in half with scissors, but what I'm going to do is take the scissors and score kind of around the wood and because you can't cut through with the scissors, but if I score around, um, I have enough um, indentation around the wood that I can just snap it off. And so I'm just kind of continuing to go around and then it just snaps easily. So now I've got both of those um, set to the lengths that I need. And then the next step is to cut out my fan and then start assembling it. And with the 
um, folding and attaching the um, chopsticks to the ends. Okay, we've got that all cut out, and now I'm going to start folding. And so I'm folding over from the back. So I have it face down, and I'm folding it over, and basically I want it the same kind of width as the chopstick, or enough to cover the chopstick. And so then I'm just gonna take it and flip it over and fold it again, just kind of that same width, same size, and then keep flipping it over and folding. Now it's not going to line up 100% just because of the shape of the fan, um, but it will end up, and you can watch as I do it. I've got this section in real time and not sped up at all. And so you can see exactly how I'm folding it. Just go back and forth and back and forth. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect and see how it's not lining up exactly. There's going to be a little bit of a um, graduated step and that is just fine. And just alternating back and forth. Once it gets towards this end part um, you can totally do it on and fold it on itself, but towards the beginning folds it makes it easier to have it on the table and to go back and forth. And then at the end, I want to make sure I have enough space again for the other chopstick or stick. You don't have to use chopsticks. You could use any old stick if you had it. Um, you can just go outside and find some sticks. And so now I'm going to open up the fan. And I love how the, the folding of the fan shape gives it a lot of really nice texture. You want to make sure it's completely dry when you fold it because you don't want it to stick at all because that could be quite bad if your paint starts to stick to itself and it would really mess it up. So I'm just going to put this chopstick in and then just some regular old tape. I'm just going to tape down. right there tape the paper and the chopstick in you could glue it you could use regular school glue you could use hot glue you can use double-sided tape um, you can whatever you have just use use what you've got um, but good old ordinary tape works now just with the tape alone I have experienced it them sliding the stick sliding out a little bit so if you do um, have that ability um, to use some glue then go ahead and use some of that glue or open up the paper a little bit more and tape the stick to the paper and then roll it a little bit and tape the paper onto itself um, as you kind of r roll it and overlap it and so there we've got our cute cherry blossom fan I think I really really like this one and now we're going to pull out the gold fan and with this one, i making sure that it's dry. And for the most part, we are almost done. It's just adding the details of the dog paw and then painting the paw gold. And after we paint the paw gold, we're going to go ahead and I'm just gonna use a Sharpie and outline the paw and the uh, draw the characters that say um, the year of the dog. So I'm just kind of free handing a dog paw. You can most certainly, it's just kind of like a rounded triangle and then the little toe shapes. So it's basically like a rounded triangle and then four kind of teardrops, but your bottom part of your teardrop is gonna be more rounded. And so it's kind of gonna look like a shoe that has no definition, kind of like if you were wearing um, big slippers. Um, and it's just kind of these little shapes. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with the yellow paint, that yellow saffron. And then I will go over the top of it in gold um, after the saffron um, has a chance to set just for a second. And I've got everything filled in and then we'll just go on top with the gold and let that dry again and then fill in with the details with the marker and do the same thing over again with the folding with cutting it out the folding technique and attaching the chopsticks or, the, or your sticks again and so i'll just let you go ahead and watch as this unfolds Okay, everything is dry now, and I'm just going to start cutting out the fan. And super simple, and you cut away all of what feels like the raw edges and the mistakes, and you just cut all that away. And it's a nice, clean um, fan detail on the edges, that border. And now I did not add a, a border to the edges because those will be covered up um, being rolled around the chopsticks and so that is why I didn't um, do a border on the sides because you're only going to be able to see the top and the bottom border and so now I'm going to take a fine tip black sharpie marker it's not the super thin one but it's that normal fine tip and I'm just going to go around the red circle and just kind of outline that and make that pop a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and outline the paws. Now comes the only kind of technical part. You could totally leave this blank and you don't have to do and draw the character 
for um, Year of the Dog. But if you want to, I will post a link or a picture to the image that I use that I use to kind of go off of to replicate that. But it's, it's kind of, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. And so I don't want you to, I don't know how to explain it, but I will post a picture in the description box and also on my blog of a picture and a link of what I um, used to, to go about that. And so I've got my chopsticks measured and I just scored them with the scissors. And after you score them with the scissors, it makes it super easy to just snap them. And then they have them the links. And then it's just repeating the process again and making sure that everything's dry now that it's all dry, we're just going to repeat the process of the folding. And this I'm going to speed up a little bit just for the sake of time. Um, but you follow the exact same process as folding the red fan. And just go back and forth and back and forth. And then attach the chopsticks to the very end um, portions of the folded sides. And again, it's super important to make sure everything is completely dry when you do the folding you don't want any of your fan to stick together. And then just finish up attaching the chopsticks with that end piece of the fan and some tape or glue or whatever it is that you've got on hand. And one more just to make it a little bit more secure. And we are done. I really think these turned out darling. And I love both options. Thank you for watching. I hope you had fun. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and hit that subscribe button right down there in the bottom right corner and hit the bell button if you want to receive notifications for when I post weekly videos. I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below if you have any questions or ideas for videos that you would like to see in the future. Have a great day.